<laughs> just got a haircut and I just did my hair too which is why I'm having my head lean back so I can have my hair dry naturally in place and uh, I would use a blower dryer because it would just be way faster but the problem with that is see there's blow dryers in the back right there but the problem with that is I am deathly scared of the heat because as soon as I have hot air blowing on me, I'm going to start sweating profusely and that's going to defeat the purpose of me taking a shower. And uh, I don't want to do that because I'm trying to stay presentable, fresh, and clean. And I just got my haircut today, but I was actually really scared about getting a haircut because uh, my normal barber, so when I go to Vin's hair salon in Alhambra, I always ask for Ben. Because ever since the first time I went there, I think ever since in college, she cut it right. And I'm like, all right, cool. And I used to cut hair in high school and junior high. When I was in junior high, I used to cut all the little kids' hair on my street. I used to fade them up. People used to have bangs and stuff back then. And then when I was in high school, I used to cut my homies' hair and cut the little junior high people hair. And I would charge like three bucks a haircut. I had a little barber shop in my garage. So I know what a good fade looks like because I can do it myself. And um, all the way through college, I used to cut my own hair and my fade was pretty good. I would go on forums and learn techniques. But then as I got older, I just got more and more busy and I don't have time to cut my hair, do the cleanup and then vacuum the floor and then check my hair and then go back and forth. Because before I, I used to be able to spend like an hour to, or two just cutting my hair and cleaning up. But also as I get older, I have so many tasks to do. Now I kind of want people to service me instead of servicing myself. So for the past, like, I don't know how long, maybe at least eight, nine years, I've been getting my hair cut at Vin's and it's always been Ben because I just sit down and he knows what I want. I'm going to tell him what I want and we just start talking about life. And unless I want to change my hairstyle, like you've seen me uh, have a more of a comb over that's more slick back a little bit, um, I would just tell him that and he'll make changes. But today he got hella busy and so he had to cancel on me and I was like, oh shit, I kind of rearranged my whole schedule. He goes, but my brother, who were on the street, is equally as good, but he never touched my hair before. And I have been jeopardized before where I tried a new bar barber and they just fuck up the whole shit because they're new to my head shape and, and uh, they don't know what to do, you know? And I was like, fuck, should I just wait till Monday? But I also been throwing out for like the past three weeks. So I look hella unpresentable. And my hair just looks like a half fro, half comb over gel thing. And I'm like, dude, I got to film and uh, we got to hire people. We have meetings and stuff. I can't be looking like a bum. So I was like, I must test out your brother because he's your brother and they opened the barbershop together. So it can't be that bad. So I got my hair cut and it turned out pretty good. I asked for a medium low fade and that's what I like to get. So it's a uh, zero down here. And then he fades up. It looks kind of harsh, like the fade doesn't look that smooth because of the lighting right now, because the lighting is really bright in this room. But if you, uh, if the room was more normally lit, you would see that it was a, a more of a smoother fade. But um, he did a really good job of following my head shape and kind of fading along. So the back of my head looks good, which is really important. The back of your head is just as important as the front of your head. So. Uh, Steve, which is Ben's name, he actually, uh, Ben's brother's name, actually did a really good job. So I'm happy about that. I think my hair is just about dry, just by even me standing here, I'm sweating. God damn, I just took a shower. But uh, yeah, because these days I've been rocking a comb over without the line. We're not a full comb over, kind of like a spiky comb over. Just because um, to get a full comb over, I need long hair because my hair is hella thick. And I uh, also just keep standing up, but uh, I don't like having hair all up in my face right now, especially with a fast paced lifestyle right now. Sometimes I don't have time to do my hair. I got to wear a hat. I got to train. So it's just too much stuff to worry about. So I kind of like having just short hair so I can go in and out. Honestly, I wouldn't even mind going bald, but Gio doesn't like me bald and having a little bit of hair, there's a extra element of style and it is a little bit more presentable. So I'm just keeping my hair, but now I'm done. Got to head to work. What's up, David? I have no idea what to do with this face. <laughs> really? Because uh, I'll try to do with that, that one design. You know when that one uh, stupid ass designer came in? She comes and she goes, got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try to do the same thing. I'm like, this. 
<laughs> that's all I got. Do you know what kind of theme we're going for? I think I'm gonna just keep it with the same theme as the rest of the office, kind of like rustic. Rustic industrial. Yeah, and I was looking at some of the stuff that I wanted to get. Actually, this is how expensive though. Like the desk I was looking at was twenty three hundred dollars. Yeah, dude, I was looking all over for a desk. It's just not cheap, man. And then uh, no one really made anything I wanted that was like that they kept inventory for. Yeah. So I kind of had to like go the custom route, and all the custom route ones they're like four to six weeks. And then I actually placed an order on a desk, and it was fifteen hundred. And then I started thinking about it, I'm like 1500 I'm waiting six weeks and I'm still not that happy with it. Yeah. I'm like, nah, fuck it. So I, I asked them uh, if they already started working on it. They're like, nah, I'm like, can I get a refund? They're like, yeah. So I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. But yeah, because like honestly, if you're not happy with it and you have to wait a month and a half or something, then what's the whole fucking point? You might as well get something either cheaper or around the same price and get it now and just be okay with it. Yeah. That's fucking crazy, dude. Because I went to like restoration hardware. And the restoration Dude, that place is expensive as a motherfucker though. Those fuckers pissed me off so bad. Not, not, not their service or anything. Yeah. It's a super high class. I walked in there, I was like, motherfucker, I saw this shit outside of 7th Street in somebody's backyard. I ain't gonna charge me <laughs> fucking two grand for this shit. And they stick like rusted pipes on it and then it's like two and three grand. Yeah, it's like 10 G's for a coffee table. And I'm like thinking to myself, like, if only I could build this. That shit's dope though. I can't, I can't build it myself. So that's the hard part. I love restoration hardware. It's just so expensive. Man, like, I, I look at all that stuff, and I'm like, dude, if you actually outfitted your house with this, you could easily drop, like, 50 Gs on just a living room. Yeah, that, that place is no joke, man. It's made for ballers. You know Dan's uh, office that, in Lacey? Yeah. His, his workstation table was just, like, this dead door. With yeah. Like, pipes on it. Yeah. That fucking table was $2,800, I'm sure. Oh, my God. And his shelving was, like, three grand, too. It was just this big shelving. And he was down with that? Yeah, he was drop a whole bunch of coffee. I think he spent like 10 grand just on like tables and shelves. I honestly would be down with like a 3G table, but it's gotta blow my mind. Like yeah. if not, like I can't, I can't justify spending that much. Even if I had- It's gotta have like goldfish swimming through and like as I'm riding, I can see fishes and stuff. <laughs> it's gotta be like that. I want this shit to be like, fuck it, what's it called? That fucking uh, Tom Cruise movie where the fucking desk comes out like this, I'm like doing this and shit. Do you know what you're gonna do? No, I can just see a desk. That's it. Where, right here? I just see desk. And then I, I want to cover this up. There's a lot of ways to cover it up. Yeah. You could even put a, put, put a curtain over it and then just slide it over, pretend like it's a giant window. I really, I'm really am thinking about hitting up an interior design. Because it can't be that cheap. That person can't be that expensive. To, to, to do a room? room? No. Nah. I'm thinking like 500 bucks. Yeah, yeah, like nothing. Like $500, right? Yeah. Just put that into the budget and whatever else I'm going to spend on. That is just way too hard for me. I can't think through this soon. What about Danielle? She's not going to do it for you? Well, I, I'm gonna see if she could do something with what she's gonna think about it. If yeah. it's shit, I'm gonna get the fuck away from me. And then, that's <laughs> somebody else to do it. If my mind is blank right now, that's kind of cool. Even if I block this out. Oh, just, yeah. yeah. That is dope. Because yeah, this is just, this is just wasted, uh, what's it called? Like real estate? Yeah. So if I come to something, we could put stuff, I could put stuff on this wall. That's true. And maybe shelves or some shit. I don't fucking know. I know, all I know is I'm on TV and something to sleep on. Too. That's dope. I'm, like, yeah, I'm thinking about putting a massage chair here or some shit. Oh, that's tight. I'm thinking about getting a massage chair too. Oh, really? I just don't know where to put it. Yeah, I'm waiting for them to fix up the rest of the office and see where there's like space to put things and then I'll figure it out and I'll have get you it. Done, have you seen, did you do any of the office yet? No, not completely yet. Oh, you're still alive? Yeah. Oh, how much that this school that's college? Oh, this is like the principal's office, dog. Yeah, so like what I ended up, I was looking for stuff, and then uh, I eventually found this desk, and then uh, this desk is called a tanker desk, mm -hmm. and it's from the 50s. So I was like, oh, cool. So I guess I kind of like some stuff from the 50s. So um, I found this couch at Ikea that has a 50s vibe. So I got that to match this desk. This desk is kind of expensive, because uh, what they do is they take old school tanker desks, and then they strip and buff the paint off mm -hmm. so that you can reveal the grain of the metal underneath. And then they put a clear coat on it like it's a car. So they restore desks like it's a car. That's an IKEA. Yeah. How much was that? That was like 500 bucks. This? Yeah, the couch. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. I, I keep couch this, it's just nice. Yeah, so I'm trying to go for like a clean but still somewhat industrial look. And then so I got this and then it's kind of like 50s theme and then they had this heater there. Look at this heater. It still works too, and it's from like old school heater. I, I don't even, obviously I don't need a heater. Yeah. But I just thought nice. I thought it'd be cool, and then I got this phone to put on the desk. Old school like industrial rotary phone, where you can call different lines and stuff. 
Oh shit, oh you're trying to make your shit like straight up Dick Tracy shit. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> That's not me here, you see? That's tight though, dude. Yeah. What are you gonna put on the walls? Um, I don't know yet, but on this wall right here, I'm uh, getting a neon sign made. Uh, of our new Bears logo for the vlogs. Oh shit. So it'll be the same color as the open sign where it's like blue on the inside and red on the outside. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So kind of have like that vibe. Oh shit, your place is looking crazy. Man, you got vision, dude. I'm like, shit! <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would be like, yeah, we're just gonna put some stuff here. Motherfucker, you ain't That's, That is what I was doing. I was gonna put a little bit here, a little bit there. No, dude, you, you got vision, dude. I don't mind this. All I got is desk. <laughs> <laughs> See the progress of the Barbell Brigade office. Oh, Nadim is set up. Uh, How do you like your new workstation? I love it. I have a huge screen right here. So I go edit all my videos. I've been having trouble because this kind of screen is kind of too small for editing. So it's hard flipping through all my videos, all my footage, the timeline, everything. So I think with the big screen, it'll make it a lot easier. Do you think that it's cool that we finally have a real office? Really, really cool. Now I actually like come in here, work, get my work done. I'll be surrounded by everyone. So any questions I have, I could just go quickly to them instead of texting them, getting a response like an hour later. Uh, everything I feel like will move a lot quicker now. Yeah, because for the longest time, I think Barbell, like we've been working like a team of freelancers mm -hmm. where we do meet up like once a week, but we all kind of like do our work at our homes or individually in different places. Yeah. And you kind of lose out I think like being a freelancer is cool because you get to work at the comfort of your own home and then you don't even have to brush your teeth and you can, you know, it's on your schedule, but then you definitely lose out on the team aspect. Yeah. And then it's easy to lose track of what cause like everyone's fighting for. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's all for something that we all want to improve on. So like before, like you said, it was cool being able to do whatever we wanted on our own time. Yeah. Uh, but that does, especially for me get a lot of downtime, a lot of time to sleep, to fuck around, do whatever I wanted. But, um, <laughs> especially if we want to like keep growing barbell, um, having a spot where we're all here, we're all working at the same time, uh, while getting work done. I feel like it's, and it's still, it's still like, a, a, we're not like a huge company where it's super strict, you come in here, get your job done, you go home, do whatever. Uh, you come in here, you still have fun, it's still like a fun job and everything, but we can come in here now, um, with everyone, get our work in, go home, and then relax. Instead of being at home, thinking that place is just for work. Because right now I'm, I'm at home, and it doesn't feel like home. It feels like a um, workplace. Workplace. Because so we have all our meetings there. That's where I do all my editing. Um, you go around the house, there's pictures of barbell, all the new clothes, and everything that we have. Everything's up there. Uh, but being here, everything's going to be here now, um, which is a lot cooler. It's a lot nicer. And I can see everything happening in front of me instead of through text or once a week during the meetings. And when I go home, I can actually relax, be prepared for the next day to come in. That's true. Yeah. Do you feel like uh, you're gonna try to finish all your work here and then try to go home? And uh, that way you could separate work from home and rest? There, there will be definitely times where I still have to take the work home just for like, for video purposes, because like video it doesn't, you can't really just stop your work. Uh, it does take a long time. There's no set hours, and um, if like a project needs to get done in like two days, um, then I basically have to get it done. So there will be times where I do need to go home and still bring my laptop with me and do a little work. Yeah. But since I'm here, I'm able to focus now. I'm able to just just work instead of being distracted by everything else. Yeah. What uh. What made you choose this super comfortable looking chair? Oh, because, uh, so I wanted a, a bigger screen, and if I got a bigger screen, if I have my laptop up here while I'm editing, it'd be good posture and everything, it'd be like a regular desk, but then I can't really see what's on the screen, it'll be blocked by my computer. And also, I feel like with editing, 
me being here for five hours, six hours straight with no break is going to get pretty tough. So being able to sit down like this, I have full access to my, <laughs> my TV. I have everything right here. I don't have to be up. I can be super comfortable and just be in the mood to edit. How do all the other people who edit like eight to 12 hours straight oh, do because it? Because they're good and they don't know what they're doing. So I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I think Casey has a bed in his room. So I think he's on the right path. Because uh, every, every JK News Day when we film pretty much from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., B. Choi is editing nonstop and he can do it in a regular chair. Yeah, let's be choy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like being comfortable. I like being... Uh, it's the Afghan way, huh? You gotta relax. Yeah. Be luxuri luxurious. How did you choose the color for the carpet? Uh, I just... Uh, when I was going to Ikea, I was picking out everything that was kind of dark. Yeah. So I actually picked out a dark rug, but then, like, as you said, like, the reason you chose your office is light. I saw this, and I was like, okay, cool. Be a little bit, like, when you walk in, it's kind of noticeable that it's white. Yeah. Um, just a little bit more contrast in colors. Yeah. So it'll be contrasting to the walls, to the chair, to the desk, and pretty much everything in here. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And it, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't stand out like crazy, but... No, it looks good. It looks good, yeah. I'm pretty happy with it. What about you, Aaron? What's, uh... How do you like... Finally having an office after running all the operations of Barbell Brigade from either your home or from our house. Honestly, uh, I really like my big screen too. <laughs> I don't know where it went, but... Uh. Oh, so, uh, so my TV hasn't came in yet. Uh, it'll be here in a few days. Yeah. Um, but I'm borrowing errands right now just to test it out and see how it is. Because we, we oh, all have see. the same TV. Oh, I see. Yeah, so he's letting me borrow for a minute but uh yeah having having a place to finally just just a base to work on everything for barbell is going to be such a stress relief because i live probably about 30 miles away from here and i've been putting on probably about 300 miles a week running errands because everything i need to do is so far from me yeah but now that i'm here I'm in the middle of everything that I need to do. So I only have to drive home, which is only 30 miles now. And having everything here in one place with everybody I need to talk to. Now I feel like I can actually finally make some strides with Marvel. And it's just nice being around the team finally instead of doing this myself. Yeah, I think that's one of the greatest yeah. aspects is like, we all see things moving and progressing. Like we do see like videos moving forward. When Churro comes in, we see the photos, but it's just all on a weekly basis. And then like we have like apparel over here, our new stuff that we're trying to launch. So there's just all these moving parts, but we don't see them moving. They just kind of finish and they happen. And then we're not really like involved with each other. But one really cool aspect is now we can be involved with each other from like beginning to end. And, and like Nadeem said, we don't have to wait anymore to bounce these ideas off each other. Yeah. It's literally like, tilt your head. Yeah, okay, we'll do that instead. You know, it's really quick. That's it true. It makes stuff move so much faster. What kind of table is this? Looks really unique. Uh, this is... Uh, and you have a freaking <laughs> nutsack dryer down there. Hell yeah. This is this is real comfort. He's got the lounge, and I've got the nut thing. The ball dryer. And uh, it's actually a an apparel cut and sew table. One segment of it. Normally they're like 50 feet long. Every like five feet is a new segment. I just figured this is an apparel company and this gets the job done. I just need a table. Yeah, so it looks cool. It looks industrial. And it fits, and it fits the, the decor. It does. This place. Like it matches like the lights, it matches the floor, it matches the brick walls. I like it. It looks good. And then over here, we got all of our samples, all different colored shirts, the new stuff we're trying to launch. It's gonna be really, really cool.
I think today I had one of those days again where I just had so many things to do, one thing after another. I was setting up the desk at the new office, rearranging the furniture, and I lost track of time, and then I had to do a um, what we call a head honcho meeting, which means me, Gio, and Aaron, pretty much like the, the corporate execs of Barbell, we have our meeting, and we kind of look over some of the bigger things of Barbell, like building out the sponsorship program, how budgeting's gonna go, how much are we gonna spend on this, how much money do we need to restock inventory at a big level, and uh, we had that meeting, and then right after we had our uh, Barbell Brigade corporate meeting where all the department heads, like Nadine, B. Choi, Saro, everyone comes in churro, and then we talk about like the mid-level things that are going on, and then uh, we pretty much wrapped. And usually that takes like a good three or four hours, and so me building the furniture and then having all those meetings, I think that was from like two all the way until about nine o'clock I didn't eat, so I was starving. And so right when we're done, since the new office is close to Little Tokyo, oh, let's get some Honda, yeah, please. Jill went home earlier because uh, she wasn't feeling that good and she knew that I've been wanting to eat Honda yeah, for like a couple weeks now. So she's like, yeah, just go ahead. I'll just go home and knock out early. I was like, oh, cool. Thank you so much, Mom Bear. You're the best. What I do hate is when like girls, they say one thing when they really mean another. And uh, Gio doesn't really do that that much. Like if she says I can go shooting, then usually I can just go shooting and have a like a guy's day out or guy's night out and she won't come back and go, you had all that fun without me. Cause uh, I hate that fucking bullshit. I hate it when guys or girls play games in a relationship. Like just be up front. If you want someone to keep you company, just be like, yo, can you keep me company? I'm feeling kind of lonely right now. Like there's no need to say one thing because you're scared of like revealing your true feelings like that's the worst thing you can have if you can be up front and be like hey you know what we haven't had sex that much this week or i don't feel like you love me as much anymore like the more you can voice things but it's also important to not just voice them as complaints because then you just end up being like the problem person where like all you ever see are problems in a relationship but if you can voice it and also have a solution like hey i feel kind of lonely um, can you watch a movie with me? Or are you down to watch a movie with me? Then that's perfect because then now you'll be known as a complaint or problem person because you're also posing solutions. So that's what I like because I think in the beginning of the relationship, relationship Gio never really uh, was that like, yeah, go eat with your friends and then come back. She goes, someone left me all alone. She's never really like that. But I think both me and her, we would complain about things and we realized that that just turns into like a random like blame game fight. He said, she said. Because now, once we got older and we're like way deeper into this relationship, we understand that solutions are more important. So sometimes we'll be like, hey, you know what? We actually haven't spent any quality uh, romantic time with each other. Yeah, we see each other all the time because we have so many businesses together and we live together. But none of that time is spent in a romantic way. It's more like, hey, uh, can you send me over this file? Can you email me this? It's never like, oh, mom, bear, pop, bear, really enjoying each other's company. And then we'll be like, why don't we have a, a dog park day? We just go and just hang out with the pups and we have a good time. And then there's a solution right there. So if you guys are ever in a rut in your relationship and you realize that you gotta voice things, go ahead and voice them, but always offer a solution because that's that's the best way. Or it's just gonna be known as that complaining ass bitch. But I'm tired as hell now. I got home. I think it's uh, 11 o'clock right now. And uh, long, long day. Started the day way early even before the haircut i uh, woke up i think around eight got a good ass training session in got the haircut and did all that other stuff so i'm gonna go home and finally knock out and kiss my wife that sounded weird that sounded old as fuck i ain't kissing my wife i'm kissing my high in the motherfuckers peace guardian aka tyson hey pretty boy yeah he's a hundred pounds they're very gentle in his 100 pound list. Hi, baby. I was here last time. <laughs> she, can't wait. she loves dogs. She doesn't like humans, but she loves dogs. Yeah. <laughs>